much for uh, the opportunity to um, present at the conference today. Uh, a quick overview of um, B Metals Corp and um, our Keystone projects and uh, really what we're about. Um, basically to have a first look at uh, the um, board of directors and uh, critical management team of um, B Metals. Some names that will be very familiar in uh, this town, Clive Johnson, Tom and uh, Roger and Dennis. Um, founders and um, senior executive of both uh, Beamer Gold and uh, B2 Gold uh, in the present day. And the real foundation for B Metals being a base metal focus company came around in that Tom Garrigan, uh, senior VP exploration with B2. Over the years saw a number of um, base metal opportunities coming across his desk and no way of really capturing that value uh, in focus gold companies in the, in the present world. So he had a discussion with Clive and um, they decided that the way to capture that potential value was really starting a standalone company. So there's no cross shareholding uh, between B2 and B Metals, um, just co-directors uh, and co-investors. My involvement with the team came around in um, a fairly interesting way. Uh, back in the late uh, 1990s, um, working with a colleague for a company called Anglovol in Namibia we were doing some base metal exploration in, in Namibia, um, looking for copper and zinc deposits. We didn't find copper and zinc, but in a covered terrain, we did find what became, we did find what became the um, Ochocotto gold mine. Um, that sort of started my relationship with uh, Tom Garrigan. Um, and then after um, a number of years where I worked for Antofagasta from Chile, the large uh, London listed copper producer, um, speaking to Tom, he mentioned that they were looking to get involved in base metals through B Metals, uh, and I came on board um, with the team. Derek, who many of you all know in, in this part of the world, um, joined us just over a year ago now um, as our IR um, uh, investor relations, uh, and interestingly enough, started his career in mining with uh, Bima back in the day. Kristen is a very important member of our team, very efficient CFO and corporate secretary, that comes with a very efficient back office staff um, in Vancouver. And the whole structure of the company really is about keeping the um, overheads to an absolute minimum and maximizing our money into the ground in exploration and obviously into the projects. During my time with Antofagasta, Richard Solito, based out of London, was our go-to um, economic geology consultant. And when I got involved with B Metals, um, Dick agreed to come on board as an advisor to the company um, and from him we have had a, a good amount of deal flow. Um, Dick is one of the world-renowned geologists in terms of um, mineral exploration and economic um, work on deposits based on practical observation of core. We started the project about two years ago now with one of my former Antofagasta projects in um, Zambia. Uh, looking for extensions of the Zambian copper belt. But early on, we wanted to identify a high-grade deposit that we could use as a cornerstone and build, uh, get quickly into production uh, in a similar manner to really Beamer Gold Corp. We really liked the look of this project in Idaho called South Mountain. Um, and after a long discussion with the vendors, we structured a deal with them. Uh, we have this property under a two-year option agreement um, on the South Mountain property, which is a high-grade zinc and polymetallic deposit. Other factors that are important on this property is that it's located on 17 patented claims, so private land. It was a past producer. There was between 60 and 80,000 tons mined out of here in the past. Because of the grade of the um, deposit, which sits at about 17% zinc equivalent, 14% zinc, um, it was initially mined as direct shipping ore, and then Anaconda did build a small concentrator on site. And um, we have the smelting records from that uh, concentrator shipments that back calculate to a head grade of about 14% uh, zinc. It was last mined in the 1960s. There are two levels of underground development into the side of the mountain, the Laxey and the Sonoman level. And during last year, our work has focused on being in on the Sonoman level, drilling from underground, and scoping the potential to build up the resource base of this uh, deposit. The current compliant resource is um, around about half a million tons on an all-in basis. 
Um, but we would like to expand that to around about the million ton, million and a half ton mark. And then we really believe we can build a small um, high grade zinc and, and base metal, precious metal deposit that, um, that will be a, a meaningful deposit and kickstart uh, a re-rating for B-metals in becoming a producer. Again, applying that similar model to that of um, Beamer Gold, most, most importantly. In terms of geology, uh, the mineralization is located in what's called the Laxley Marble Unit. And historically, it was described as a, a SCARN deposit. But in September last year, we had our consultant, Dick Salito, um, visit us on site. And the realization was that the massive sulfide bodies themselves are preferentially intruded into the carbonate unit, the Laxey marble. So we would like to uh, reclassify this deposit as really a carbonate replacement deposit, which actually probably does increase the upside of the um, deposit in terms of its ultimate tonnage. But as I said earlier, the, um, the near-term goal for us is to scope out that one to one and a half million tons of high-grade material um, and for us to build a, uh, a meaningful operation on that basis and then incrementally expand the resource and the production um, going forward. The deposit, if you take uh, from the outcrop in the east on the Texas zone, which is a little bit of a higher grade zinc, um, sorry, copper area of the deposit, to the deepest point that was mined on the um, Laxey zone, um, already covers about a 300 meter composite vertical profile. Um, and some deposits that are similar in the CRD environment in northern Mexico are known to extend from surface down to about 800 meters at depth. You see the hole in um, orange. We'll be putting a news release, re news release out tomorrow morning uh, of results of that hole that again has shown that we've been able to further extend by about 75 meters the DMEA zone, which currently supports the bulk of the tonnage um, in the um, South Mountain deposit further 75 meters down plunge. Uh, and it would appear this hole is somewhat on the edge of the mineralization. We are seeing some uh, zinc mineralization, but a common theme of our drilling last year on the DMEA zone has really been that we're seeing um, an increased gold credit in the mineralization. And we're doing mineralogical and metallurgical studies um, already and during this year to, um, to see what that means in terms of being able to extract that um, value. That's a little bit easier to see the sort of nature of some of the mineralization that we've pulled out. If you translate some of these intersections into a dollar per ton uh, rock value in situ, a number of these intersections are, are running between 600 to 800 dollars a ton in situ rock to give you an idea of the value of this material. Uh, and going forward, we will probably work the deposit whilst a lot of the um, cutoff grades are on visual massive sulfide contacts, which will be good from a mining point of view to preserve the high grade nature of the deposit, uh, we will be working on a dollar per ton value uh, as an underground cutoff. During this year, um, further drilling will be designed to produce a resource, revised resource estimate by the end of the year. Um, and during the year also move into um, the end of this year or early next, uh, a PEA study. So as I mentioned, we founded the company with um, one of my former Antofagasta projects in northwestern Zambia, it's called the Pengeni Exploration Project. Um, I kept close to this project because I knew that the um, Kalahari sand cover in this area was of a moderate thickness. Uh, and in a strange way, the thesis for the discovery potential of this license is similar to how we found the Ochikoto deposit in Namibia. The Ochikoto gold deposit would have been found by uh, German prospectors in Namibia 100 years ago if it wasn't for the fact that it was covered by a thin veneer of calcrete cover that masked all the bedrock geology. In this area, we've swapped out that calcrete cover for Kalahari sand or desert cover, and we're exploring through that covered area looking for potential extensions of the um, copper belt mineralization. A number of major international companies exploring in uh, Zambia at the moment and have been for, an, for a, a number of years, including Rio Tinto, First Quantum obviously have their operations in that area, um, and um, Freeport, Anglo-American with a large exploration license situation further to the west of us, 
But further to the west, the um, thickness of the Kalahari cover goes over 100 to 200 meters. So the Pangani project with its around about 25 meters of cover, um, I felt was an optimum project for a small company like us to take, take forward. That's um, a map of the um, license itself. It's a large license, 575 square kilometers. The yellow color there is the sand cover on the property. Uh, and really what this is all about is interpreting airborne geophysics, generating targets, targets for sediment hosted copper through that interpretation, using very portable um, air core rigs, punching holes through that sand cover to effectively do deep soil sampling. Um, we did a number of phases of that last year of the year before, generated some strong um, geochemical targets up to 1600 ppm. And during last year, we followed those up with uh, core drilling. We've pulled out of a number of uh, intersections uh, in the bedrock uh, range in the region of uh, five meters in thickness, and that's close to a true thickness, uh, around about 0.5% copper. And importantly, a number of them um, have an association of the, with the chalcopyrite of kyanite. And that's what we find in the nearest mine to here, First Quantum's uh, Sentinel Mine, which is about 130 km kilometers as the um, crows flies. Um, this is another target that we extended, the Southwest uh, Anomaly, as we call it. We've extended that far under the sand cover to the, um, to the east. And again, we're importantly seeing that association of um, chalcopyrite copper mineralization with kyanite uh, and a structural association. And interestingly enough, one, although narrow sample of half a meter returning uh, on a quartz vein type material, but getting us up to 2.7% uh, copper. So really getting some uh, encouraging results from a first phase of core drilling onto this property uh, under that uh, relatively thin Kalahari cover, but certainly very workable in potential um, still open pit um, environment. Sentinel mine, which is the closest mine, as I mentioned here, is in the order of uh, 850 million tons at about 0.5 copper. Another similar type deposit in the region would be Lamuana, which from inception would have been about 1.5 million tons at about 0 0.6, 0 0.6 copper. So really some encouraging results. Um, and the way forward here now is to, what we're doing at the moment is a structural uh, interpretation of the um, core. And we'll use that to put out grids of air core drilling to try and vector us towards extensions of this known mineralization now and where there might be um, higher grade material. Most of the copper mineralization we've seen is um, quite simply chalcopyrite mineralization, common, common copper sulfide mineral, but we are seeing cores of bornite in, in with some of that um, chalcopyrite. And on deposits like Namwana, they often core the um, high grade sections of the mineralization. So really encouraging results uh, although an early stage project, a project that could land uh, a true world-class discovery um, as obviously the majors are looking for in this part of the world. A little bit about the corporate structure of, um, of B-Metals. Um, we have a large insider um, backing and, um, and shareholding. A large portion of that 61% of retail there is actually owned by friends and family of the um, insiders as well. Uh, the 9% in gray there is a um, portion of shares held by the vendors of the South Mountain property. Um, and all in were about 100 million shares outstanding, uh, with it giving us a market cap of about 25 million Canadian at this point in time. Um, this is really the first conference that we've um, marketed uh, B Metals in Vancouver. We were just waiting for the news flow to build up from South Mountain. You'll see more news flow coming out tomorrow um, and into the future. Uh, and we're really starting to increase our marketing going forward now as we have those solid results um, behind us. So just a sort of value proposition of the, um, of the company. Um, you know, a team of, um, team of mine builders and explorers, we get good guidance from the board. Obviously their main focus remains um, B2 Gold, but we have um, a lot of interaction and guidance that um, really exceptional um, experience base for us to pull upon and get guidance on prom. Um, we're probably different to most of the other uh, juniors in our space in that we really want to become a producer. That's where we see us adding the most value. We have been able to raise 8.5 million in the last um, 18 months or so in, in the current challenging markets, but at sensible valuations because of that. 
um, and we do get extensive deal flow. So we're always looking at potential new opportunities that we would bring into the portfolio at the right time. And the near term drivers will be the continued news flow out of South Mountain um, and the implementation of the next phase of exploration work in Zambia. So there's our contact details. Derek's obviously based in Vancouver and um, you know you can obviously contact him. Please come to the booth. Um, we can have a more lengthy um, discussion. And uh, thank you for your time and uh, listening to the presentation.